Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata, and welcome to another MetPy Monday. This week, I wanted to talk about one of the more common support questions that we get, which is dealing with units. In an ideal world, units would just work, and we've talked about how to use units in MetPy before. Unfortunately, units are still a little bit of an evolving area in scientific computation, and don't quite work everywhere yet, or maybe have some behaviors that are unexpected. But this week, I want to show you one behavior of units dealing with temperature, where you have to work with it in a little bit different way than you might be used to thinking, but it's actually the physically correct way. This stems from the fact that units are in this system that doesn't only have a scaling factor, but it also has an offset. There's a reference point. Ultimately, everything is referenced to absolute zero. But there are all these strange offsets that happen so doing things like adding temperatures together maybe isn't as straightforward as you would think. Okay, so let's take a look in a notebook. First, we'll remind ourselves a little bit about how units work. So from metpy.units, import units. That brings in the unit registry that contains all of the available units. And then I'm going to set up a couple of variables. So let's call the first one A because we're creative. And I'm going to make it 25 times units dot. And if you hit tab, remember, tab completion, here you can see all of the available units. There is a lot. You can convert miles to furlongs and miles per hour to furlongs per fortnight if you want. There's all kinds of units in here. But let's do a simple one. Let's say kilometers. And remember, there's a couple of different ways that you can note this if you would like. So you can use the units dot notation, or you can say units and then put it as a string. So miles. If we run that cell, now we have A and B. And if I subtract A from B, you'll see that I get a result that is correct in that pint, which is the underlying unit library, was able to take care of all the conversion force. It converted miles to kilometers, then did the subtraction, and is showing us that result is 16.9 kilometers. So now let's try a similar exercise with temperature. So I'm gonna say C is 25 times units dot degrees Celsius, deg C. And let's make D five let's go ahead and stick with degrees Celsius. This could be Fahrenheit, Kelvin, whatever you like. So what happens if we multiply these together? We know there are some formula, especially in thermodynamics, where we have things like temperature to the fourth power. So if we take C times D, you'll see that what happens is these are converted to their absolute unit, so Kelvin, and then multiplied. And so we get the result of 82,930 Kelvin squared. All right. So what if we take a ratio? What if we do C divided by D? Well, in that case, we get the ratio of 1.07, which is dimensionless. Again, remember this is happening in the fundamental unit, Kelvin. And we can have some more complicated compound expressions. So for example, we could do C times D divided by C. So we should have a Kelvin squared in the numerator and then Kelvin in the denominator, which would leave us with Kelvin. But now what about something like C plus D? Is that 30 degrees Celsius? Well, if you convert it to Kelvin, it's actually 303 Celsius. So this should be an issue when we try to do it. We're going to have a result that doesn't make sense intuitively. And sure enough, you'll see that we get an error. This is where folks get confused because they get this error that says ambiguous operation with offset unit. Well, for a little bit more insight into this, let's look at what happens if we type C minus D. Well, in C minus D, you see we get 20 delta degrees Celsius back. So that's the key is it's a change in temperatures, not an absolute temperature. So there are a couple ways that we can deal with this. One would be to convert things to their absolute units. 
So we could say something like C dot two Kelvin minus D dot two Kelvin. And if you're at C, we get 20 Kelvin. Okay. So that's one way to do it. What's really a lot more intuitive, I think, is to use the delta operator. So we can say something like C minus 20 times units dot, and I can just type the first couple characters and hit tab, remember, see what all's here. I also don't, maybe don't remember it or don't feel like typing the whole thing. Here's delta degree Celsius. And now I get what I would have possibly expected at first, which is five degrees Celsius. I'm taking 25 degrees Celsius, I'm subtracting 20 delta degrees Celsius and getting five degrees Celsius back out. I can also say C plus 20, and this time let's even make it do a unit conversion here. Delta degrees Fahrenheit. And I see I get 36.1 degrees Celsius. So hopefully that helps you understand temperature units and how to use the delta temperature unit in MetPy's unit registry a little bit better. Thank you for joining me on this week's MetPy Monday.